What's up everybody, Trevor Man 351 here. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd give a little tutorial on the T5 that I'm building for the Super Fox. Um, not a rapid crazy build, but just a slight upgrade so that it can hold power in fourth gear. Because fourth gear is one to one, and fourth gear is my power gear that I ex absolutely just explode with power and take off. I'll do that in third once in a while. Uh, first and second I don't because it's too low of a gear. I'll probably grenade the T5 if I do that and throw all the 800 horsepower right at it. But um, I have it all tore apart. Um, now doing these, man, is a little tricky, guys. You got to, you know, kind of know what you're doing a little bit. You got to watch that T5 guy on YouTube, Paul Guinelasi. Uh, he's really good at doing this. What I did here is that I added a cluster support. A retainer right here that's made out of billet and Paul at T5 five speed transmissions or five speeds.com uh, has these and he's all over YouTube taking these apart and I just put one on here and I put a steel bearing retainer on here and I shimmed it really good dude there's like no play in this main shaft none it's like really solid and it spins real freely um Tearing these apart, dude, is, you know, you got to watch these videos first before you start doing this. If not, it will drive you nuts. Because the worst thing I had to do here was try to get the fifth gear assembly synchronizer keys here and the little brake thing it's got to line up with the synchronizer key so that all this would slide on correctly so I can put the snap ring here on, okay? That is was tricky and hard now there's a trick to doing that getting the keys in here and then putting the retainer clip in and then getting everything settled and in place and not jumping out of place and it all sliding on now that's going to take a lot of time right there to do that and it's meticulous and you just got to play with it for a while and you'll get it but uh eventually two and a half hours later i finally got it yeah it did it took me that long i had to walk away from it a couple times to, you know to be like really man and then come back to it and then i had to walk away again because i was getting really frustrated and i came back to it and then it finally clicked for me i figured out how they do that they set it down here on the table and the keys won't fall out if it's sitting on here you just pop the keys in pop the clip in flip it over easily pop the other retainer clip in and then slide it on but you got to make sure you're lined up with the synchronizer keys okay now, like I said, how much can a T5 handle? I have a video on that, and it's pretty tricky. If you don't drop the clutch in first gear and do crazy burnouts with really big tires, these things will last you. But if you're going to do that, this thing will grenade like an absolute time bomb. These cases are not really thick, man, okay? The G-Force transmissions are insane. Thick cases, thick rails. The Cosworth ones are even better or just the same. So this one was rebuilt a while ago, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. I had all the synchronizers replaced and so forth, and I had a second gear put in. Uh, fourth gear looks fine. Fifth gear looks okay. I tried to replace the fifth gear um, synchronizer key, but it wouldn't let me do it. I had this one out from another transmission, but this piece here was a little bit fatter, and I could not get it to line up, man. So I guess they're all certain to a certain date, these parts. Some are interchangeable and some aren't. But um, and then, you know, to get the tail shaft on, you got to slide all this on at one time, one assembly. You got to put some grease down there. And this guy here to get the ball to stay and all that slides on, one assembly, and you're good to go. And then you slide the top cover sideways back in so that the shift fork rails were engaged and you're good to go. Okay? A lot of time. A lot of patience with these T5s, man. But if you're a Fox body owner, okay, you're going to play with this eventually. And you're going to get to know how to do it, just like I did, okay? And it took some time, dude. So, but, I mean, unless you got money, you can just send it out and get it repaired. Okay, so be it. But if you're like us and budget-minded, you're going to have to learn to do this on your own, okay? And that's the fun, and that's the excitement part about doing this hobby. Because once you know how to do it, then all of a sudden, you're like, dude, I want to upgrade it now. I'll just rip it apart and put this in it and put that in it. And it's the same way when you tear a motor apart and you learn how to do it. You learn how to lash valves, hot and cold. Learn how to set clearances for bearings 
and you learn all that stuff, gap in rings. And then all of a sudden, you want to dig deeper. And then after doing it for so many times, you get good at it. You know what I mean? And then you're doing the work, and you're saving money, and it feels good to be in your own hot rod knowing that you built it. You know what I mean? But it just comes with the territory of the hobby. You know what I mean? Learning this stuff is fun and it's exciting. And plus, it's good for your kids to learn it and get them involved and so forth. And it just all works out for the better. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. I thank all y'all for watching me. It's an absolute joy and a pleasure. Thank you. Peace. Whoosh.